Good afternoon. This is group two, and this is our uh, e-commerce uh, group project for Big Data. I'm Mark Crawford. I'm Dahiria Dave. I'm Pridarshini. And I'm Shruti I will be covering topics including how we've implemented asynchronous callback functions in JavaScript, uh, and I'll be discussing the front-end uh, cloud architecture through Amazon Web Services. I would be going uh, through the NoSQL database, that is the Cassandra database, and uh, walk you through the Java code, how we have integrated it uh, uh, with the Cassandra database. I'm going to explain the losing search part of our project, and I will be explaining the cache system, which we have implemented using S3. So first, I'm going to go through our system architecture diagram here. So at the front, we have the customer who will be interacting with our website. Uh, as you can see, we are in an AWS cloud environment. All of our servers have been uh, spun up on the cloud and implemented. Uh, when a request first comes in, it'll hit our uh, LAMP web server. Um, and the LAMP web server is responsible for interfacing with uh, the S3 cache, our Tomcat application server, uh, Lucene, and the Apache database. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, just primarily with the uh, Tomcat server. Uh, which then accesses the uh, Cassandra database. Um, so from our Tomcat server here, as you can see, we have Lucene and uh, the connection to the Cassandra database set up and coded in Java. Uh, and those will respond with information of how to render images from the S3 cache. So we'll go ahead and, and step into the front end code here, which is particularly which is loaded on our web server. Uh, to demonstrate the asynchronous callback functions that we have set up. Um, so we have our code here. Uh, so we have a, just a simple title. We have a table, some HTML, some table information. Uh, the primary thing to note here is this is our input search text box uh, with the search command. And let me go ahead and I'll show you this HTML as well rendered in our browser here. So this is what you're looking at rendered for the, what would be for the client. Now as we scroll down here, um, we can see we have a JavaScript script in with the HTML as well. What this is responsible for is the asynchronous uh, function. So when a user hits submit uh, to run a search, it will call it, it will issue a post request from the uh, user browser to talk to our PHP on the server, uh, the post request. So this is our post request function. And again, this is an asynchronous function. So this uh, command will be issued uh, and the JavaScript can continue operating. Um, and it will continue operating while it's waiting for information to come back from our Tomcat server or from the server specifically in the PHP. And then it'll actually, once it completes, and gets information back, continue operating, uh, and show the different information on our product info uh, and the product image. So from this post request, we'll show really quick here, we have uh, on our uh, LAMP server, we have the PHP code. It builds a URL for the REST web service uh, that we have set up, uh, and it'll gather that information from our Tomcat server. So from this PHP function on the LAMP server, uh, like I said, the, uh, a post request is issued and then the PHP function um, issues a request uh, to the Tomcat server, uh, which we have left open here in Eclipse to demonstrate uh, the functionality of the code. Um, this is the primary page. If it is a post request, it's going to run our function uh, and start into the Tomcat application server where our caching and searching systems uh, along with our database connection are maintained. Okay, so I will be taking you through the Cassandra setup that we have done. For this, we have used a bitnaming instance of Cassandra that is set up on the EC2 server. Uh, I'll be showing you the uh, 
Bitnami instance later on first. Uh, let me take you through the uh, DDL and the DML statements that uh, we are using for the code. So as you can see, I have created a key space over here. Uh, the key space is the products key space, and uh, using the within the products key space, uh, we are creating a electronics table. And here are the attributes of the electronics table. Uh, we have inputted uh, some data in this table uh, and uh, as you can see from the screenshot that uh, this is our data and now let me just uh, show you the EC2 instance this is a Bitnami Cassandra instance so it uh, has the Cassandra setup and uh, we are connecting to it using the Java code so let me show you the connection that uh, we are making through the Java code so here is my database connection where I am connecting to the cloud uh, instance of the Cassandra database. So here the username for the database is the Cassandra database. We have the password for it and I am connecting to the products key space uh, using the connect function for it and uh, just doing a uh, select statement. Now this code is integrated with the search functionality. So uh, once we run it, uh, the whole search code would also run so I would switch uh, to Priya and she would explain the search functionality. Hi this is Pridarshni. I'm going to explain the search function of a project. This is the UI. I'm giving my search string here and clicking submit. So here is the ident variable and model LG. So here in the index curve, we get the ident and model variables and from here we'll go to the CBF main function. So here there's an if statement, if the search variable gets here, you, the search function will be triggered. So we are already connected to the Cassandra instance here. From the Cassandra, we take the data and store them in the local files in Lucene data directory. So here we are writing it onto the text file. Then we trigger the Lucene test and the index part. So let's go on to the classes. So this is the Lucene tester code. Here we are creating two directory paths. Uh, Lucene index and Lucene data. In create index, the data in these files will be indexed into the di uh, index directory and in search uh, based on the search string uh, the index files will be searched and if the string is found in that file it returns a canonical path of the file So from the file path we get the product information and the product information string is added to the response. So I will be explaining the caching system which we have implemented in our project using uh, S3. The, you are currently viewing the S3 management console and uh, our bucket is the USS trial bucket and we have already loaded the images. We are trying to implement uh, upfront loading in our cache system but for the sake of simplicity, we have already uploaded the images that we need to make the project run. But however, we can upload it program pro programmatically through the Java code, which I will be explaining right now. So this is the caching code. Uh, Amazon offers an S3 client, and we have to set our credentials into our client. And uh, as you can see, I have already uh, created a string with my bucket name. So I'm just going to put an object that is the image which I want to put in my bucket. And uh, I'm going to view the image with an, with a URL. Once 
once the code is run, uh, as we can, uh, we can see that we have retrieved a URL for our image. So let's verify that in our S3 management console. So we have uploaded the teddy bear image and this is how we are programmatically uploading uh, our files into the S3 system. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we've, we've already uh, populated some of the images into the S3 cache. Um, our code is returning that URL, as Shurti just said, along with our uh, product information. Um, so from here, we have uh, initiated a search from the client end, passed that search via post request, um, and a JavaScript function, or a JavaScript asynchronous function into a um, the, the actual server itself. The server then contacts the Tomcat server um, to run the, the search uh, to and get this information back. Uh, the information is pulled from our Cassandra database. Uh, from our Cassandra database, we then uh, have indexed our search, um, and uh, so it pulls all of our products um, based on the URL provided from the, uh, or sorry, not the URL, the variable uh, or the search string provided from the user, uh, we have located this product as the highest scoring product in the search. Um, that product is then returned, uh, that product information is then um, gathered and returned along with a URL um, to the cache uh, of the uh, image depicting our product that we have discovered in the search. Um, so this information, um, which is currently on our Tomcat server in the AWS cloud, is passed back and we can actually see that in our console here. Um, we've printed out uh, the response um, from our asynchronous callback function. And so this is the information here. Um, for the purposes of this demo, uh, we have hard-coded some of this information in, um, and we're using this here just to show that we indeed can get that information back. So once again, we'll reload this. We'll enter our search term. As you can see, it is returning the exact same thing with a path to our S3 bucket image uh, in our cache, which is uh, located close to the customer. So that concludes our big data project demonstration. Um, again, we have covered um, cloud architecture, asynchronous callback functions, Although they were not implemented in Node.js, they were with JavaScript, uh, a search system built on with Lucene caching, uh, with S3, and database, uh, a big data, a NoSQL database with Cassandra. Thanks for your time.